During World War II, Japan saw themselves as the liberators or protectors of the non-white world. So they tried to form alliances with nationalists in India, the Philippines, the Arab world and beyond. Essentially anywhere that wanted to free themselves from colonial rule. But probably their most ambitious plan was to align themselves with the black nationalists in the United States. Some of the people who met with the Japanese you may have heard of, like Elijah Muhammad, the creator of the Nation of Islam. What the hell are you talking about? What are you about? talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is that true? I love what the hell is you talking about? Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you always know when we have brand new content so you won't miss a thing. Random things you need to know. I am your host, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, leader of the Nation of Islam. It is I. If you guys have been bitch shooting watching, thank you for coming back. If you guys are at YouTube watching, thank you for coming back while we have the chance to bring you these episodes. And if you guys are at Rumble or Gab or one of the other websites where this episode could be, thank you for coming back. It was a lot of effort for you to see it over there, and I appreciate you doing that. This episode is very interesting. We're just going to touch on a little piece of a larger story. Maybe we'll put it all together and we'll make it a series or something. I don't know. Uh, this is the relationship between the Japanese, the Nation of Islam, and the African Americans in the 1900s. You guys are probably listening like, what the hell? Yeah, we're going to get right to this. Have you guys ever heard of the Black Dragon Society? Do you know of them? Okay, well, let's learn. Uh, the Black Dragon Society was founded in 1901 by martial artist Uchida Ryohi uh, as a successor to his mentor Mitsuru Toyamas, who was a far-right extremist uh, in Japan also. As a result, its membership, including cabinet members and high-ranking military officers, as well as professional intelligence operatives. However, as time passed, it found that the use of criminal activities be to be convenient means to an end for many of its operations. Initially directed only against Russia in the 1930s, the Black Dragon Society expanded its efforts around the world and stationed agents in such diverse places as Ethiopia, Turkey, Morocco, Southeast Asia, South America, as well as Europe, and, of course, the United States. But Black Dragon influence wasn't limited to Asia. Uchida created a worldwide organization. Black Dragon agents operated in Tibet, Mongolia, Central Asia, the Middle East, Morocco, and even Ethiopia. After World War I, the Black Dragons saw America as Japan's new number one enemy, and they saw racism as America's Achilles heel. In 1920, a Black Dragon agent named Yusichi Hakida made contact in New York with black nationalists who advocated political and economic autonomy for African Americans. Hakita believed that racial discrimination made African Americans open to influence. Black Dragon propaganda claimed that Japan was the great champion of all colored peoples against white oppression. The Ethiopian Pacific Movement and the Peace Movement of Ethiopia, both African American black nationalist organizations, claimed they were affiliated with the Black Dragon Society. As part of their effort to support such organizations, the Black Dragon Society sent an agent, Sadokata Takahashi, to promote Pan Asianism and claimed that Japan would treat them as racial equals. He would become a patron of Noble Drew Ali and the Moorish Science Temple of America, Elijah Muhammad, me, and the Nation of Islam, as well as the Pacific Movement of the Eastern World. Mitty Maud Lena Gordon, who led the peace movement of Ethiopia, claimed to be personally affiliated with the Black Dragon Organization, Black Dragon Society. Peace Movement of Ethiopia was an African-American organization based in Chicago, Illinois. It was active in the 1930s and 1940s and promoted the repatriation of African-Americans to the African continent, especially Liberia. They were affiliated with the Black Dragon Society. 
The organization was founded in December 1932 in Chicago, Illinois. They met at 4653 South State Street in the 1930s and 1940s. They had more than 300,000 members. Its founder and president was Mitty Maud Gordon. She was a former member of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League and a supporter of Marcus Garvey. The organization uh, uh, advocated the repatriation of African Americans to Africa. Uh, their affiliation with the Black Dragon Society, however, was unwittingly. They did not know that they were a front for the Black Dragon Society. Most of the peace movement of Ethiopia's funds came from Japanese Councils General in New York and San Francisco. By 1938, the Pacific, uh, the, I'm sorry, the peace movement of Ethiopia was supposedly being run by Sadokata Takahashi. He called himself Colonel Sadokata Takahashi. Who he really was is uncertain. He'd earlier immigrated to Canada under the name of Naka Nakanune. He disappeared from his Tacoma, Washington home in 1926, later resurfing in Chicago and Detroit. In those cities, he cultivated black separatist organizations, such as the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the new Nation of Islam. In 1942, Mitty Maud Gordon, President General of the Peace Movement of Ethiopia was jailed along with other religious leaders. The raid, which occurred in, in 1942, also included members of two of the pro-Japanese African-American organizations, the Brotherhood of Liberty and the Black Man of America and the Temple of Islam, of Islam which would soon become the Nation of Islam. It also included members from the Worldwide Friends of Africa. Gordon said she had 4 million followers. And they were all taught that they are citizens of Liberia and therefore are not subject to selective service. When the organization dissolved, many of the members joined the Nation of Islam. Another black organization. So, so far, let's, let's recap what we have going on here. We have a Japanese organization that is very uh, ultra-nationalist, very pro-Asian, pro and they are in America telling African-Americans about Pan-Asianism, basically telling the black man that you are Asiatic. Has anyone heard this? I've heard Big Daddy Kane say this. We be sizing up the Asiatic one is enterprising, building and building to carry on. Back at the land. The growth of the Asiatic chosen one is expanded with the new brand. You better believe that I'm an Asiatic descendant and I know what's been amended and intended. In some raps, the Asiatic black man, the Asiatic black man. So this is not even an idea that the African American man has come up with himself. This is an idea that the Asian man has brought over here to try to somehow racially control the black man and make him believe that he is some form of Asian. Okay. There's a guy whose name keeps coming up in this. I don't know if you guys have noticed it. It's this person right here, Sadokata Takahashi. Right? This guy keeps coming up. Who is this guy? Well, let's talk about him. Uh, his first name is sometimes rendered into Ta Sadotaka. He also goes by Naka Nakani. He also goes by Satokata, uh, Takashi, Takashin, and Takaashe. And there you go. Uh, he was described as a major general in the Japanese army and an affiliate of the Black Dragon Society. According to FBI reports, he was the instigator of the Pacific Movement of the Eastern World, working through Ashima Takis. When Mimo de Guzman was arrested by the FBI on July 30th, 1942, he revealed that Kahashi was a Japanese national and that was the real power behind such groups as the Pacific Movement of the Eastern World, the Onward Movement of America, and the Eastern Pacific Movement. Elijah Muhammad, me, was friends with Takahashi and Takahashi's wife Pearl Sherrod was formerly a member of the Nation of Islam. In the 1940s, Selective Service Registrars noticed African Americans in Chicago, Detroit, and several other large cities were refusing to register under religious grounds and described themselves as Muslims. Around the same time, the FBI was receiving reports that Japan 
was funding African-American groups that were radical and wanted a radical revolution. In 1942, the FBI used undercover officers to infiltrate a group. The Black Dragon Society was channeling money to financially aid black Muslim groups throughout the United States. In 1939, the FBI charged that Nakani had been an influential presence in the nation of Islam. He spoke as a guest at the NOI temples in Detroit and Chicago. He also influenced Elijah Muhammad's attitude towards the Japanese government. The FBI had a copy of a speech from 1933 where Muhammad pro, pro, I'm sorry, proclaimed that the Japanese would kill the white man. FBI informants noted that NOI's flag, white crescent and white moon in the, in the red background, was similar to the Japanese flag of the red sun with white rays on the background. They also noted that the flag was similar to Turkey, whose population is mostly Muslim. And that the flag was similar to the Soviet Union's, whose flag is red with a sickle star, with a single star and sickle. In an interview with, F with the FBI, Elijah Muhammad claimed he met Takahashi at a woman's house. Could not recall who the woman was. Additionally, Muhammad claimed that he and Takahashi discussed NOI and that Takahashi approved his teachings. The Little Colonel, as Takahashi was nicknamed, formed a close relationship with Nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad. And he was the guiding hand behind two other organizations, the Society for the Development of Our Own and the Pacific Movement of the Eastern World. These targeted disaffected African Americans and preached that Japan was the champion of non-whites. Takahashi had two helpers. One, Ashima Takis, pretended to be Japanese. He actually was a Filipino-American named Policarpio Manansala. The other was a supposed Chinese aristocrat, Moi Liang. The Pacific movement of the Eastern world picked up followers from Detroit to St. Louis. Federal agents took note. In April 1934, immigration authorities deported Takahashi to Japan. He wasn't gone long. That August, he returned to Canada as Naka Nakanune. For the next five years, he secretly directed the Pacific Movement from north of the border. Then, in 1939, he snuck back into the United States using yet another alias, Hisazi Kubo. Federal agents tracked him down. And when Pearl Harbor was bombed, Colonel Takahashi was sitting in prison for immigration violations. In July 1942, FBI agents also picked up Ashima Takis. He spilled the beans about the Black Dragon link to the Pacific Movement and the Black Muslims. Two months later, the FBI rounded up 85 African Americans in Chicago. One was Black Muslim leader Elijah Muhammad. Labeled Takahashi's Blacks, a dozen men were charged with sedition and the rest with draft evasion. The Pacific Movement of the Eastern World was a 1930s North American pro-Japanese movement of African Americans which promoted the idea that Japan was the champion of all non-white people. The Japanese ultranationalist Black Dragon Society was an influence upon the PMEW. The Black Dragon Society was a parliamentary organization with close ties to Japan which viewed the United States as, Jap as Japan's enemy in World War II. The organization was frequently taken advantage of by its founders, Ashima Takis, who ultimately was arrested for embezzling funds from the group. The Pacific Movement of Eastern World was founded in Chicago around 1932 by Sadokata Takashi. He reportedly recruited Ashima Takis as and his Chinese companion, Moi Lang, into the leadership of this organization. The organization preached worldwide unity of colored races under the leadership of Japan. When its president, Ashima Takis, moved to St. Louis in 1933, membership took off. Takis soon associated himself with Burt Cornish and Walter Lee Peoples of the United Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA, the group that Marcus Garvey was a part of. 
and claimed that the New York City branch of the organization was affiliated with Japan. Cornish and people soon set up a PMEW branch in St. Louis with the help of Moi Liang. The organization began to grow in the poor African-American community in, Louis in Missouri. Frequent open air meetings were marked by anti-white sentiments, particularly regarding the historical use of African-Americans in wars by the United States, followed by refusing to let them share in spoils of war. Shima Takis, who also used the pseudonym Pili Policarpio Mansala, and Itake Ku, president of the PMEW and one of the founders of the organization, made numerous false statements during his tenure. In order to raise black membership, he spoke in a thick Japanese accent. His partner, Cornish, said Takish was actually quite fluent, but spoke with an accent because your people wouldn't believe me if I spoke too well. Takis also raised membership by downplaying racism in Japan, promising his Negro audience that if they moved to Japan, that they would be treated as equals, have jobs as at better pay than what they could get here in America. And they would also be able to marry Japanese women. Ashima Takis also posed as a physician and faith healer. Cornish stated Takis claimed that he was a doctor, but he was not licensed to practice in the United States. Although he apparently studied medicine at a university, Cornish also states that Ashima held himself out to be the faith healer of the Negro people, and that he regarded themselves as cured of various ailments after Takish laid hands on them. When Japan invaded Manchuria and China, Takis fell out of the PMEW and his Chinese compatriot Liang, he eventually moved to New York where he helped the Ethiopian Pacific Movement. In December 1939, Takis returned to St. Louis and the PMEW. He was welcomed back but insisted that he referred to be known by the pseudonym Mimo de Guzman. Takis joined in various attempts to prepare for the Japanese invasion by gathering a small arsenal. However, Takis fled after he was reported to the, to the police for embezzling money from the PMEW. Ashima Takis was not taken into custody until two years later. Takis and Cornish soon found a breakaway organization, the original independent benevolent uh, Afro-Pacific movement of the world. Jesus Christ, that's a long name. After being ousted from the PMEW leadership by Peoples and Takahashi, they set up an or operating. They set up operating in the Kansas City area, and sometimes posed as PMEW representatives. In preparation for the future war for s racial salvation, they called on African Americans to train in modern warfare and offered a subscription to a colored aviation school. They also offered opportunities for African Americans to homestead in Japan. Takis fell out with peoples and went to organize in Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Dayton, and Pittsburgh before moving to New York City, New Jersey area. Here he came into contact with the Black Hebrew Organization, the House of Israel, co-founding the Ethiopian Pacific Movement with Robert O. Jordan of Harlem. The Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated was a charitable organization established in the United States in 1937. Its aims were to mobilize support for the Ethiopians during the Italian invasion of 1935 and to embody the unity of Ethiopians, black people, home and abroad. Sections were established in other parts of America. Later, the EWF was given charge of area of land in Ethiopia for housing rental returning immigrants. EWF sections in different countries became increasingly identified with the African diaspora movement, even though it was originally aimed at African Americans ready to defend the Ethiopian subjects and their empire from the fascist Italian aggressors. So this organization is trying to get blacks together to utilize them for their own method. This is something that also happened before in Harlem with a black man was running around calling himself an Absidian. So everybody is using the African-American race, knowing that they are disillusioned with their race and who they are in America, using this to their advantage. Interesting. Let's just sum it all up. 
you know, quickly right here, because we, we've gone on into the history of this long enough. Many people have said, I didn't even know about the Black Dragon. Well, shame on you. There was a movie called The G-Men versus The Black Dragon. Keep in mind that our aim is to spread terror and confusion, to cripple America's war effort and undermine her morale. Those spears will touch. When they do, you die. very interesting to me on one end you got the far right groups trying to use blacks for their agenda during world war ii and it appears that you may have some far left groups marxists communists trying to use the blacks for their destruction of america on their end everybody's just using the african americans and in the end what ended up happening from all this is african americans took all of that misdirection and influence of lies and took that as black culture, created a thing called black culture from that. Running around calling themselves the Asiatic black man, even calling themselves Marxists. What the hell? Kind of makes you wonder, what is a black person? What is black culture? If none of these things that we believe in even started, I have anything to do with being black. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you guys leave some messages in the comment section. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think, no, Lorenzo, we, but the Japanese were looking out for us, so we are Asiatic, and that's what we are. All right, you guys, leave some messages in the comment section. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think... Uh, no, no, Elijah, you haven't proved anything here. Those Japanese people were looking out for the blacks. They were just trying to bring all the blacks into the fold, and we are all actually Asiatic. You just don't know what you're talking about, okay? All right, well, maybe that's true. I don't know. Seems like what was happening is the 1900s came, nationalism swept through all of the different nations and different, and people were all up in arms about their national ethnicity, and the blacks were trying to figure out what is theirs? What is our ethnicity? Instead of them embracing being a black Americans, they were looking elsewhere, and that made it easy for groups like Marxists, Japanese, and even anybody else. Anybody else could come in and say, hey, this is what you're a part of. And the blacks kind of bought into that. Becoming disillusioned with, with Christianity because they felt like it was white. Becoming disillusioned with anything in white society made them believe that they had to go carve out their own identity. And that is what led to things like this. Being misled, people utilizing false narratives about history and things of this nature to get black people to believe in things that are not true and now they're a part of black american culture which is just sad because it has nothing to do with us so you know it kind of makes you think uh, black americans maybe we should just stop looking elsewhere and just go ahead and embrace that 400 years of history right here in america just accept that we're black americans we've got a history here it's, it's good it's pretty good history you know, a lot of good things have happened in the past 400 years there's been some sad stuff but we triumphed i think we should look at that instead of trying to look for history elsewhere it seems like every time you start looking elsewhere for history somebody comes with some fictional stories you end up getting duped the black race ends up look, looking like fools to the rest of the world because they know the truth <laughs> and they know that we were never a part of that past so what the hell are we even talking about? All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. And this is something that you needed to know. And the radio. Yeah, boy!